keynote with Sean Zeller, uh, who is principal architect at Naturebox right now, and he used to be for, from the first engineer at EcoSign. So we met a couple of weeks ago. We were introduced by one of our investor, and uh, so with whom you built EcoSign, and from pretty much the start to till its acquisition by Adobe. Uh, you're now principal architect at Naturebox, getting your hands dirty coding after many years of uh, managing big teams. So I think there is nobody else better than you for, for this talk. And it's very interesting because it's uh, also very linked to what Joseph was saying about people switching back and forth. So perfect. Welcome. All right, first I'd like, guess I'd like to thank Plato for the opportunity to get up here and hopefully share a little bit about, about my experiences. Um, I would definitely agree that I think there's a fair amount of overlap between what, um, what I've heard from everyone else. I think I would agree with all the comments I've heard so far uh, and hopefully my experience will give a little bit of color to some of that. Um, okay, so up until probably the last year or so, um, I went through a period of probably around seven or so years of being an engineering manager. Went from started as sort of direct engineering manager, made the transition up to VP of engineering. Um, like many people, I think I kind of went into it, um, a lot of it was probably to have more impact, feeling that like as, um, as I was growing, I could sort of do more things, maybe bigger things as an engineering manager. I also had a lot of mentors uh, personally that, that went that route. And so I was like, okay, like these people did this great stuff. I want to do that too. Um, so found myself between engineering management jobs, uh, did kind of the obvious thing and said, okay, I'm gonna look for another VP of engineering job because I guess that's what you do. I mean, once you get to that point, what else are you gonna do? Um, so started looking, uh, realized, okay, this may take a while. Um, wanted to go work for a small startup again, uh, trying to find the right fit between kind of founders, team, interest, product. Uh, it's really hard. I think it's, uh, I think it's probably one of the harder things to try to find, especially at kind of the VP level. Um, so knew it was gonna take a while. Uh, so started reaching out to my network to find out what, uh, you know, both what did people know about and uh, were there anything that people thought would be interesting for me in the meantime. Uh, so a friend of mine reached out and said, actually, uh, my team is currently trying to build a whole new website. Uh, we're trying to move the business in a different direction. Uh, as is many of the case in small startups, everyone is super busy all the time. Uh, and so said, okay, well, why don't uh, we get a contractor, somebody to come in, help us bootstrap this, help us like make that more successful. <laughs> uh, so can somebody turn up the AC in here? Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, so I said it sounds like fun, right? I could get to come in somewhere. I even commented uh, to one of my coworkers who's here tonight uh, that it was actually like a vacation. I could go into the office. I knew nothing about the code base, so I could not fix any bugs, answer any questions about anything, and get to code from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. I think that literally is actually my idea of a vacation. Um, so I did that for a while. I, that was a lot of fun. Um, what I found was that as I did that, uh, I sort of, my role kind of almost organically expanded, right? Started answering more questions and more of the engineers on the team, uh, giving more advice, kind of trying to shape more of what we were trying to do and really enjoyed it. Um, I think went through, you know, we released that version of the website. It is what today is naturebox.com. Everyone should go buy some snacks. Uh, it's, it's my shameless plug. Um, and, and decided though to keep, to keep looking, right? So I looked, did some other stuff. Uh, fast forward probably five or six months. Uh, same guy reached out to me and said, you know, we have the budget now. Um, why don't you come to work here full time? Let's, let's find a role for you. And it was really weird. It actually kind of struck me that that both seemed obvious and yet kind of non obvious at the same time that I think I made kind of the same mistake I think a lot of people do when they're looking for the next role and sort of think about what is the obvious thing to do, right? To get to the point of uh, not wanting to worry about, not only think about uh, taking a sideways move or a backwards move. I think some of the, some of the speakers tonight even talked about like having people, helping people to realize that um, going from manager back to individual contributor isn't necessarily demotion. It's just, it's a different role. Um, there's lots of overlap, but there's lots of differences. Um, and I think that took a little bit for me to even think about. Um, but it's one of these situations that like once I actually thought about it from kind of start to finish, uh, it was a great opportunity. I mean, how many of us get to essentially try out a role in company before you actually go work there? It's pretty infrequent. 
Uh, I've been to lots of great startups and lots of not as quite great startups. Um, and well, I love all those experiences. Being able to have a role offered to me where I knew I really loved working with the team, I loved the product, I loved the people outside of engineering on the team, and to have them actually reach out to me and want me to work with them, uh, that seemed great. So I said, yes, let's go for it, let's do it. Um, I think the term, I guess now is the end loving it. Uh, so if people want to know like what I've learned since that point. Um, I think one of the things that I enjoy about the job is that I think the flexibility of not being engineering manager lets me focus on a daily basis for what I feel like is best for the company. Uh, and that's across a broad set of stuff. Um, I think one of the things I learned from working with the team was they're very open to feedback from any level about what they can all do better, whether that's uh, the director of engineering, the VP of engineering, or the engineers themselves. And so I think I get to use like all the pieces of my experience on a daily basis uh, to give people feedback about what I think we could be doing better, um, how I think we can accomplish that, uh, and still be able to be in the code, doing code reviews, doing all of that sort of thing on a daily basis. Um, so those are some things I really like. Uh, I really enjoy doing it. I think um, in the few months uh, since been, I've taken the role, I have no, have no complaints. Um, I think some of the maybe gotchas I've learned um, have been, I think, having done engineering manager for a long time, uh, at least it feels like a long time to me, um, it's very easy to sort of say, okay, this is what I would do in this situation, but uh, since I'm not the actual manager, I sometimes have to like catch myself, step back and say like, you know, I'll give my feedback, I'll say what I would do, so it's more than just uh, criticizing the situation, uh, but give whoever is responsible the flexibility to do it their way, because that's actually the most important. Um, I think it's also really easy, especially when you get into management roles, to whether you want to or not, kind of rely on the title. Like if you're the VP of engineering in a meeting, it's clear why you're there, it's clear why your feedback is necessary, valued, et cetera, and why people are listening to you. Uh, you're coming in as an individual contributor, you don't have that crutch. You essentially need to rely entirely on like the strength of your argument, your ability to sort of win over your coworkers, whoever are the decision makers. Uh, in some ways, I think it forces you to kind of up your game from a, um, from I guess a kind of a soft skill standpoint. Uh, and I've really enjoyed that. You know, I feel like with with any role. Um, it is what you make it. I think um, I appreciate all the comments. I, I agreed with all of them about kind of tech lead versus dev manager, et cetera. Um, and I'm a firm proponent that if you go with the route of engineering manager, you should focus on that entirely 100% and learn to like let the individual detail technical kind of go by the wayside. Uh, but I do think also that with any role, there is a flexibility to make it what you want to make it and sort of adapt it to your strengths. Um, and that's probably my, my other for my final point is that. Um, I think when you're thinking about roles and different options, um, I think we all tend to sometimes focus very closely on, um, on the constructive feedback we get, right? There's all these surveys that talk about how much everybody wants constructive feedback, and that's super true. Constructive feedback is very valuable. I am a firm proponent of it. Uh, that said, I think it also creates a culture where sometimes you don't think about sort of leaning into our strengths uh, and trying to maximize the value of your strengths. And so why it's important to recognize and work on the things you're bad at, I think finding a role where you can also maximize everything you're good at uh, is really important. And I think sometimes, uh, sometimes your next steps may not be uh, completely obvious. Um, I think if you were to ask me, am I going to ever be an engineering manager again? Uh, my guess is I have a few more years left in me, and I probably will. Um, I don't know that I'm necessarily itching to do it again right now, uh, but I think I didn't necessarily take this role because I got tired of being an engineering manager. I felt like it wasn't for me, uh, but that I was really excited about the role in front of me uh, as an architect at NatureBox. See. Okay, uh, so do you think that going back to an IC role in the same company is feasible? It seems easier to switch to a different place instead. Uh, yeah, I would actually say that's probably pretty true. I think it depends on why you're switching. I think if you, I think if you had gone from IC to an engineering manager in a company 
and then gone back in the same company, and you had a lot of individual respect from your, uh, from your teammates for your technical ability, um, I think you'll probably get a lot of support in it, right? If they can better utilize you as, a, as an individual contributor, as like some kind of lead, whatever, um, I could see a lot of people feeling like, wow, that's, that's very supported. In some ways, my guess is actually it'll probably seem weirder for the person doing it than for the actual sort of people around them, but yeah. Um, how'd your network take the move back to IC? Um, do you have to advocate for it not being a step down, or how do you talk talking a step forward in your career? Yeah, no, I think that's really uh, that's really tough. Although I didn't feel like I felt like I got a lot of support in my in my network. Um, I feel like it's one of these. It's easy to talk about things being back and around, and uh, you know, I think I occasionally see LinkedIn posts about people talking about steps sideways in their career, etc. I think we just all take steps. Uh, that's how I've like learned maybe to talk about it is like this is just a another move, um, and and yeah I mean I think there's no I think part of it's just how you tell the story right like what do you think is interesting about this this new role you take I mean for me you know I love I loved working with the team uh, I love the product I think we have a great culture um, it really just kind of excited me to go work with these people uh, in no matter what role and I think that's that's kind of the story that I tell around it. Sure. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> yes. How do you throw yourself? How do you get feedback? Um, now it's possible that you get a lot of behavioral feedback from your manager, but in terms of like technology and throwing yourself technically, how do you get feedback? Uh, what do you do to keep yourself? Yeah, no, that that's a that's a good question. I feel like um, there's probably, I have like a couple of different maybe answers to that. One is I, I feel like actually I'm kind of lucky to be working with a team that's a little bit on the younger side. Uh, so to be honest, just trying to stay as energetic, stay ahead, and keep reading on stuff, trying to figure out like what are the next things in React we should be doing, like uh, what's the next project that somebody on the team should try to do, uh, trying to sort of think through those things. So it's kind of how I push some of that. Um, I find that a lot of what I'm trying to do currently is, fig is sort of push, uh, try to grow the kind of the, some of the different soft skills that, uh, that I didn't necessarily exercise as much or I can exercise differently in my current role. And so I'm kind of lucky that, uh, that my current boss is somebody that I'm, I both am actually friends with but also like really respect as a person. And I, so I feel like we can have a pretty honest feedback back and forth about what he thinks I should be doing better uh, and how I think I can actually do that. 